what's up everyone so this is a continuation of the previous video generating java document part one this is the part two and this will be the final video of this tutorial so i'm going to start from where we stopped the last time i'll run the script again this is the output or the method information we got the last time i'll copy this and paste it to a window where i can see while i'm typing the script or the code Next, we are going to generate Java document lines. I'll create a new function for that. Inside the function, I'm going to create a table to store the lines. I'm going to create a simple helper function to add lines to comment lines. I'm also going to modify the get document function to take a parameter or method information as a parameter. Let me bring the current line to the center. All right, now that we have a helper function to add lines, let's add some lines. In Java, to start a document, you should put forward slash double asterisk to indicate this is a start of a document. I have added another line. In here, I'm using a string dot format method and I'm passing in the template. In the template, I have percentage %s, that means this value right here will be replaced by method info name and I have description within arrowheads just to in indicate that the user should fill this out manually. I have started a for loop and as the first variable I have an underscore because I'm not going to use the index and this value will be the index but we are going to use the param which is an element within this param info array so it will go through each and every element and it will assign param uh, for the current element it's looping within the for loop body once again i'm string formatting the template we have a param uh, tag and we have two placeholders first one will be the parameter type and the second one one will be the parameter name since java is a statically typed language you don't have to put in the type in the java document but in this case i'm going to put it just because we retrieved it from the uh, traceitor query next i have added returns uh, annotation once again here you didn't have to put the type because java is a statically typed language but i'm going to do that anyway just for this video once again, I have a placeholder for you user to update the description for the return type or describe what we are returning from the method. Here I have added asterisk and full slash to end the document or the multi-line comment. Then I have a new empty line. The last thing left to do is to return the comment lines. Next, let's try running the get document function and see if it is executed correctly and we are getting the correct output we needed i'm going to print and inspect the return value from get document and i'm going to pass in get method info or results of get method info into get document okay now the result of the function seems to be valid so let's continue i'm going to create a new function to add the document to the buffer or the source file i called it add document let me center the current line in here i'm going to get the method information once again if the method info is null we have to return or stop what we are doing next we are going to retrieve the comment lines by passing method information and finally we are going to insert the text into the buffer you can get more information about nvm buff set text function in help as you can see the first parameter is the buffer number the start row the start column end row and end column is followed by the replacement or the lines you want to replace the replacement should be a table or, or a list so let's add that information to our script 
I'm going to pass 0 to indicate the current buffer. I'm going to pass in the start line of the method as the start column. The start row will be 0. End column also will be the start line. And end row is number 1. Then we can pass in comment lines. At the end of the file, I'm going to run add document function. Let's try running the script now. As you can see, we have added the document successfully, but there are multiple indentation errors that we have to fix. First, at line 7, we have to fix the space here. And we have to indent these lines by one tab space. I'm going to correct the first error. Here we have to add a space. Next we need to figure out what the current indentation for that particular method is. So I'm going to import one module. So let's go to the top of the page. I'm going to call this TS indent. And I'm going to import nvim traceitor indent module. Now I'm going to create a new function to get the indent string. Function is going to take the line number and it will use the ts indent module to retrieve the indentation or the indent count to be specific. Next, if the indent count is zero, meaning there is no indentation needed, I'm going to return an empty string. In NeoVim, tab stop option defines the size of the tab space, so I'm going to retrieve that. Next, I'm going to calculate the tab spaces needed for the provided line number based on the indent count. Let's define a variable and assign an empty string to uh, hold the tab space. Now, as you may know, there are two ways to indent a code. You can either use the tab space or just the regular space to indent. We need to figure out which indentation method we are using. In a Vim or NeoVim, it's defined by expand tab. If the expand tab is true, that means we are using normal spaces. If the expand tab is false, that means we are using the tab key or the tab space. Once again, if the expand tab is true, that means we will be using spaces to indent. So let's assign tab space here. The string rep repeats the provided string multiple times. So as the second parameter, we have to pass the number of times that should be repeated. So the tab stop represents a size of a single tab space. Then we are going to multiply it by number of tabs, which will return the total number of spaces we need. Now, if we are using tab spaces instead of just regular spaces, I'm going to assign the tab space for that. Once again, I'm going to use string repeat. This time we are going to use backslash t, meaning the tab, uh, tab space. And we are going to repeat it n number of times or n tabs number of times. And finally, we can return the tab space from the function. Next, we will have to modify get document function to use the tab space. So let's first add a new parameter called tab space. Next, I'm going to concat the tab space to the current line when we are adding them. So here I'm going to add tab space. Next, we have to modify get document function call. So let's do that. First, I will retrieve the tab space. The line number will be start line in method info. 
then we can finally pass the tab space into get document function i'm going to save the file and try it again on the java source file okay finally we have generated a document indented correctly i think you can add more logic to even update existing document but this is where we are going to stop the tutorial i will let you continue by yourself so this is it thanks for watching have a nice day